Good morning, everyone. My name is Linda Hardy. Uh, my pronouns are G, hers. And um, it's my privilege to welcome you this Sunday morning to First Parish. Thrilled that you're here. And uh, this will be a Layla service. Some of the other worship leaders are Elizabeth Driscoll, Cheryl Kitty, um, Ron is doing our technology today, Ron Clark is doing technology today, and Sherry Clark will be taking care of time for all ages for us. And thank you, Emily, for providing such lovely music. We first want to start with uh, acknowledging that we are, our uh, church buildings are located on the same land as the Wampanoag, uh, worth for thousands of years. And we want to say that we appreciate and honor um, their beliefs. And they've set a great example for us um, in the way that they uh, faithfully were stewards of this land. Today's service is really about <clears throat> renewing our, con our covenant. So we'll be talking a lot about what a covenant is and have you participating in um, examining our current covenant as a congregation. This service is being recorded. Uh, we'll stop recording after the benediction. So the section where we have candles of uh, joys and concerns, that section will not be recorded. Um, because our service is very week to week, you never know uh, what a service here will look like. But we, for those who are visiting or may not be members, we encourage you to come several times to really get the experience of how we worship together on Sunday morning. Our call to worship this morning is from William F. Schultz. Come into this piece of play, come into this place of peace, and let its silence Heal your spirit. Come into this place of memory and let its history warm your soul. Come into this place of prophecy and power and let its visions change your heart. Please stand as you are able and sing or speak with us the very powerful words on him and the free 18. We would be one.
On Sundays, when we stand as we are able and say our covenantal promises to each other, we are participating in a sacred moment, a moment grounded in a foundational field of shared values, stretching into an open-ended way within the web of all beings. We, as you speak it, are creating our future together. This moment, <coughs> speaking of covenant, is powerful. It changes us, moving us to transform the future, straightens us to put the covenant in use, to act it out, and to do covenant things <coughs> together. Science acknowledges this. We have the opportunity to rearrange our brain. We are doing self-directed neuroplasticity. The act of a covenant ritual in and of itself will change the participants in the neurological level. Many everyday rituals make a lot of sense and are surprisingly effective, such as the ritual when we say the covenant when we light the channels. As many have pointed out, prayer may not directly influence God or the future, but prayer changes the one who prays and can change the future. Please join me. You okay. Okay. Go ahead. That's okay. Please join me in saying our covenant found in the order of service while we wait the chalice. <laughs> she just got back in the States today and got this to me. In his autobiography, Theodore Parker relates that as a child of four or five years old, he was walking through the fields one day, absentmindedly swinging a stick through the tall grass. This was many years ago, in the days even before the Civil War. It was summertime. He stopped to watch the water bubble along the creek. Then he noticed a turtle sunning himself on a rock. He'd seen other boys use their sticks to strike animals um, and turtles. It was part of what children thought was fun. Just as some children still like to bully and hit others who are weaker than themselves. Often children and grown-ups, too, are copycats mimicking the behaviors of others who seem to be bigger or stronger than themselves. Young Theodore wanted to be like the older uh, boys he'd seen, so he raised his stick into the air, taking aim, preparing to knock that turtle into the water, not caring if it was perfect. Something stopped him. Something seemed to be wrong with that. He looked again at the turtle, that Madeline has for us. Quiet, peaceful, 
enjoying the summer warmth and the light of the sun. Had the turtle ever done him any harm? Was the turtle so different than himself? Slowly, he lowered the stick and walked home, thinking about what had happened. When he arrived home, his mother was there to greet him. <coughs> his mother was there to greet him, and he told her about the incident. She listened carefully to Theodore. Mothers do that. And and related how some and related how some strange force inside him had stopped him at that moment from hitting the animal. Theodore, she said, that feeling inside you was your voice of conscience. Always pay attention to it. Always follow what your conscience tells you. It's your moral compass that points you in the right direction. And if you honor your conscience, you'll never go wrong in the world. Young Theodore Parker grew up to become a Unitarian minister. In fact, one of the greatest leaders of our faith has ever known. He became a champion of the defenseless who needed defending. He was a hero in the fight to end slavery in our country. He prayed to father and mother God and fought for women's equality and their right to vote. He and his wife never had children of their own, but he felt a sense of kinship with the whole family of creation people of all sexes and races who had been made in the image of the holy. And it all started one summer day when just as a child, he saw a turtle and decided to do both sweats. And now I will take our children on the voice of the earth. Learning in the sky. Learning in the sky. This is the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. transformative for us as individuals, as congregations, and as a faith movement, our covenant must be a living experience. That living experience must be ongoing. Covenants grow and adapt. They are reviewed and renewed. Quite often, review leads to change in the words, but equally as often, the words stay the same after the review. What matters is this the ongoing process of assessment and rejuvenation. Engagement must be part of the covenant experience. We engage with the words of the covenant. We engage with each other in the promises made. This is an intentional and energetic activity that requires focus and attention. Movement is important in this embodiment. When we recite the covenant, we may stand or hold hands or turn to face one another. Studies in the power of ritual show that identifying the movement with a special moment in a ritual creates an adhesive effect. Another way of embodying the covenant is to make it visible, printed and displayed as well as published in the order of service or in our newsletter. It's also important to restate it to one another as a key part of our Sunday service. Because the covenant is a balancing between and among people and depends upon the interaction of human beings in order to exist, it lives.
Dan Schatz is a, um, I have a little thing from my to it again. Dan Schatz is a Grammy nominated traditional and contemporary folk singer, singer songwriter, multi instrumentalist, producer, and author. He is also a UU minister. So I don't know where he gets all the time. Um, in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Now, in researching uh, some music uh, for UU services recently, I came across a video of Dan singing this song called Carry the Flame that he wrote. And I reached out to him and said, Hi, do you mind if I sing your song? And he said, Oh, that would be great. Thank you. And he wanted to speak about it a little bit. And he said, I originally wrote Carry the Flame during the pandemic for a service honoring the one year mark of lockdown. But even then, I was thinking of it in more broad terms than that. And recently, I've changed the word sickness in the first verse to trouble to make it more broad. Carry the Flame could be about a <coughs> pandemic but can also be about justice work, organizing, or any endeavor in which ordinary people keep the flame alive. time you ever knew, the only thing that you could do was carry the flame, trouble spreading through the land, you held your spirit in your hands, you carried the flame. Storms and sorrows gathered round. You raised your head and you stayed your ground. You carried the flame. Through endless days of the hardest living, you kept on loving, kept on giving, you kept on carrying the flame. Carry the flame. And high, send it begin through the sky, keep it strong and shining through the pain. Let it rise and let it grow. Let it light the world you know. Let it grow. Carry the flame. And when the day is one that past, we take on the spark you passed, and carry the flame. From hand to hand, we send it on, the kindling glow of a rising dawn in us all. We carry the flame, carry the flame, raise it high. Send it speaking through the sky, keep it strong and shining through the pain. Let it rise and let it grow. Let it light the world you know. Let it flow. Carry the flame. We are nurses, doctors, teachers. We are children, parents, preachers that we all carry the flame. We are scientists and cargo packers, farmers, singers, grocery stackers, young and old. We carry the flame, carry the flame, raise it high, send it speaking through. Let it rise and let it 
My name is Cheryl King, and I'm going to serve as um, our facilitator for our discussion about our covenant today. And at the very beginning of our discussion, um, you know, we have a little transition team, and Linda introduced, I think it was Linda that introduced the team. Ron in the back is doing our video today, and then Linda and Elizabeth are not only really conducting the service, but we're also getting a glimpse into you know, a moment of their lives where they got together to have you know, dinner and discuss this service. And while they got together and um, had this service, they hadn't seen each other in a long time. They sat down in a nice restaurant. This wonderful wait staff came over. They ordered a wonderful glass of wine. And they do the things that you do when you haven't seen somebody or you're working on a project and you're doing something special and meaningful. And the wait staff comes over and they pour the wine. And you're going to have a really lovely meal together. And what is it that you do when the wine is served? Yes. You clank the glasses. There you go. And all of that just for that little line. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a. Um, thanks, everybody. Does anyone know why we clink the glasses when we are together with friends and we're enjoying a nice meal and we do this ritual of clinking the glasses? Perhaps to clear the air of anything that's been said before. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. It's not the answer that I was going to have, but it certainly worked. Anybody else have any other answers or any other thoughts about why? Something to do with poison. Poison? <laughs> Another interesting answer. The answer that people know, but we just kind of gave it up here. We just picked things up. So, I'm thinking Julia? as a, sometimes a bell means uh, the beginning of something. A, yeah. A portion mm -hmm. like it coming to church or something. So maybe it means that this is a time of coming together. Right on. It is, um, the answer that I understand it to be, and it could be a lot of different things, is that when we are enjoying a good meal, we are accessing all five of our senses. We are smelling the good food. We are tasting the good food. We are feeling the good food. We are, um, what did I skip? I skipped one. What's that? Visuals. We are seeing the food, obviously, and of course the clinking of the glasses is making that noise so that we can hear the experience as well. And that's really what that does, is it completes all five senses in the ritual of having a meal. The idea of connecting your senses to your, um, to your activity helps to enhance your memory of those things. And we're going to talk about the covenant in a little bit. But um, Emily's going to give us a little bit of a song right now, and I want to see what happens when she gives us this bit of a song. <laughs> Did everybody just start to sing? So we hear, and that triggers our memory. And the idea of connecting your rituals to your memory is really what anchors it deeply in your soul that really internalizes what we are doing in the ritual and, um, and therefore what we are doing in our everyday life. Every time we hear those chords in that order, we start to sing. Every time we sit down at the table to enjoy a good meal with a good friend and we have a glass of wine or something to drink, we tend to clink the glasses. It anchors, it creates that ritual, and it creates that repetitive 
think it reinforces why it is we're doing what we're doing. So I want to just ask everybody to think a little bit about those sensory things that you have in your life that trigger strong memories. Uh, I have a couple in my mind, but if anybody wants to start off, think about those senses. It's a smell. It's the something that you see on a regular basis. Go ahead, Jim. Touch. Now, whenever I make a grilled cheese sandwich, <laughs> and I like grilled cheese sandwiches, I always think of my grandmother because she used to press down on top of the grilled cheese sandwich. She said the thought it tasted better. So every time I make a grilled cheese sandwich, I think of my grandmother. <laughs> Isn't that so sweet? I love that. Yeah. Does anybody else have a little homespun story like that? The smell of the ocean. Every time I smell the ocean, I think of my father and my family and my childhood. It's like, what's an instant smile on my face? Isn't that great? Yeah, that's good. Uh, the, the rustle of leaves when you're shuffling through leaves, it takes you back to when you're five and also very present. It brings you to the present, too. And all the times you've had the opportunity to walk through leaves. That is fantastic. One more idea of a particular sense that brings you to a certain place, triggers a memory. Christmas tree smell. Oh, that's a great one. I like like that. Um, similar to that, but different season. I love like the, um, the smell of the fresh cut lawn, or even starting a, a barbecue outside if you use charcoal, the smell of the lighter fluid. It's like, <laughs> oh, we're going to have a good time today. This is going to be great. I love all of those things. When that Christmas tree comes in the house, it's great. So when we say the same things and we do the same things and we connect those to our five senses and um, we are making a pledge, really, in our covenant to say this is how we are going to treat each other. But we want that to be more. In our readings today, we talked a lot about how we light the candle at the same time. So we're watching it and somebody is doing the act of lighting the candle. And we are speaking the words together at the same time. We're anchoring those words and we're anchoring that pledge, that covenant, that promise to each other as to how we are going to live and how we are going to treat each other. Let's for a moment, we'll just all repeat it again. We'll say the covenant together. Love is the spirit of this church and service is love. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in freedom, to speak the truth in love, and to help one another. I'm going to talk a little bit more about some rituals, and I want to make a ritual today. <clears throat> Not really a formal ritual that we're going to st stick to, but it's the bones of what could become a ritual so that we can elevate our weekly ritual of lighting the chalice and repeating those words, and maybe we want to adjust those words, and that's a good exercise for us to do, um, but also to anchor it. So when we reconfirm our covenant, or we adjust and then confirm our new covenant, we every once in a while, not every week, but maybe once a year or twice a year, there's an added ritual that goes with it that really accentuates the lighting of the chalice and we go forward. I'm going to ask folks to think again about <clears throat> those rituals that you have experienced in other parts of your lives, not just the sensory and the, and the memories, but think about those rituals in your life and think about the senses that are connected with those rituals. Can anybody think of a ritual that you do or that you have done? Maybe you don't do it anymore, but you used to do it in another place. Rituals come in all shapes and sizes. I brought some bread because one of the rituals <clears throat> that I know that some places do is they will break bread, right? And then they will all eat a little piece of that bread. And that is obviously we are tasting. That is one of those things. There is a particular religion that eats bread in the middle of service. Yeah. I brought the flowers because I love the smell of the flowers, and I think that that is another one of those memories. We often decorate our altar with flowers. 
thinking back to probably a similar place. Um, in some congregations, in some churches, it's traditional during the, the Lord's Prayer to hold hands with the person nearest to you. So you're hearing it, you're speaking it, and you're in touch with the person next to you. Correct. In that same place, now I got drinks of water for the hell of it, right? <laughs> um, but in that same, you know, that handshake, right, also often part of that. But it doesn't have to be a church thing. Think about the rituals that we do. There's one that is pretty common. Go ahead. I was going to say, you sing, we sing happy birthday before we cut the cake. I think both of them, the singing and the cutting the cake. Absolutely. And the candles. The candles. Right? The candles. There's a lot of birthday rituals right there. Absolutely. Those are all very common, and there's lots of different senses going on. Yeah. <clears throat> Birthday's a great ritual. Hi. I'm thinking about hugging our grandkids when uh, we haven't seen them for a while, or and then also when we leave. Uh, we leave. Absolutely. Uh, it's kind of a ritual for us. And yeah. That's a great time. Absolutely. And it marks that, it marks that visit. That's wonderful. How about the wedding trip? What's that? Sweet Caroline. Oh, sure, absolutely. Sweet or Sweet Caroline, the seven yeah. things. Yeah. Absolutely, seven things French, Sweet Caroline. Absolutely love the Boston stuff. That's great. Singing in general, right? When we are singing at church or when we are singing at the ball game, um, the um, national anthem, all of those things are triggering memories and they're triggering those things, and those are all rituals. So what I want to do now is I want to have a um, multi-sensory um, ritual, just a short one, that's going to connect to our current covenant. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like, I just wrote a little, or we, uh, I just wrote a little um, explanation as to the main points of our current covenant. So I'm going to, like, sort of read this thing that I wrote while different folks come up here and take a small candle from here, and you're going to light it from the chalice, and then you're going to go over and you're going to light the colored candle that I am speaking about. So I'm going to need five um, volunteers, and why don't we have those five volunteers come up right now, and you're going to stand over here. There's a visual part of this. Thank you, Jen. I can always count on you. <laughs> I need a couple more volunteers. Thank you very much. Gary. <laughs> Emily, are you a volunteer? I can be. Yeah, why don't you stand right here? Thank you, sir. Great. OK, so thanks for my volunteers. You're going to come up behind me. You're going to come over here. You're going to grab the candle from the little thing. You're going to light it here. And then you're going to go around one at a time. Tell me for a second. Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Good to meet you, Mom Cheryl. So, Thomas is going to go first. I'm going to give Thomas his candle. <clears throat> You're going to come around here. We're going to write, light the red candle first. Love is the spirit of this church. Love and spirit. Red. Deep emotions and deep red. We light this red candle to symbolize the spirit of our love and our aspiration to treat all people with love. May the spirit of our best selves permeate our actions such that it is evident to passerbys and pulls others towards us like gravity. Thomas, that's great. And you can just go to the back of the line, but stay up here in front. Great. Right. All right, Jen, you are going to come down and you are going to light the gold candle. And service is its law. Gold. We light this gold candle for service. A nod to the golden rule. Treat others as you would be treated. To walk a mile in their shoes. To give of yourself. To pay it forward. We practice humility. Thanks, Phyllis. You're next. And you are going to light the white candle. This is our great covenant. To dwell together in peace. Peace. White color of a dove. We, love, we light this white candle so that we may light the children, 
<clears throat> be like the children and serve society as a messenger and inspiration of peace. Wait, you are going to light the blue candle. To speak the truth in love. Truth. The blue candle. True blue. We light this blue candle to represent our journey for our truth, as well as our respect for others' truths and the truth in the world. This candle is a reminder that we seek to reconcile the, our perspectives with reality. All right, Emily, you are obviously going to light the orange candle. <clears throat> and to help one another. Community and help. Orange. <clears throat> We light the orange candle to represent our warm embrace. We recognize our personal shortcoming and errors, and we know that it is our community that picks us up through our most challenging times. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> so, a big round of applause for our volunteers. <clears throat> now, each of our volunteers, I want you to do one more thing. As you walk by, there's a, um, there's a, clipboard with some, um, with some notes on it. Grab a clipboard and grab, grab a pen. There's only a few of us in the group today. We are actually going to take a little time now and do an exercise together. You're going to take these clipboards back and you're going to sit with your friends. You're going to sit with your community. And each of you together, the color that you read, the color that I read, the color that you wrote, that you lit the candle for, you're going to work with your neighbors and you're gonna come up with your words for that attribute. So if you lit the red candle, who wrote the red candle? Uh, Thomas did, right? So whoever's gonna sit next to Thomas, the four or five of you are gonna to work together and do what I did, which is write your little sentence about love. And then whoever's with the gold candle, you're gonna do your thing about the gold candle, which is the golden rule. Let's go. Who did the gold candle? Great, Jen. So you're gonna do service, and then so on, peace, and then truth, and then community, and help. Great. Thanks, everybody. Emily, you have to get ready for a song. Yes, we'll have we'll, we'll, we'll a feature for you. Truth. Okay. You got truth. That's what Community. All right. Community and help. So now we're going to take a little five minutes. <laughs> We're doing orange. We're doing orange. Whatever that means. Yeah. Well, we can also. We have more clipboards. If there's folks that feel like they're not participating, what was orange like? Community. We're doing community. It accepts people. It accepts there might be things you want to say. Yeah. It's a shared value. Honestly, I think I'm really very deeply but I've been here since 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 I've I think
Yeah. 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 Brand new. Yes, yeah. And you're writing the company. You're so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. I thought so. We had a lot of new books. That's why you're just first year. It was great. It was a good leader of books. What's your thing? I think that you're going to be first. Ready? All right. I want my volunteers to come on back up. All right. Come on back up, volunteers. I know. You had no idea. You come to church. Come for that, too. Let's hear what it Oh, you're going to volunteer. Emily was. Do you want to take Emily's place? <laughs> okay. So thanks, everybody, for being such a good sport about this. The way that rituals work and the way that covenants work is the activity, not only the activity of helping to write it, helping to work on it, and thinking about it and reaffirming it, but also the act of doing it every single day. That's part of the covenant. That's how it works. So it's important that everybody is <laughs> deeply involved. Um, so what we're going to do is one at a time, you're just going to come up and you're going to say, this is the, the value that I was talking about. I was talking about peace or my group was talking about peace, and my group was talking about truth, and my group was talking about community and health, and then read off the sentence or so, and if it's a little bit clunky, please don't worry about it. We do want to collect them at the end. I'll talk about that. So once you read it off, then you can go have your seat, and then you're, you're off the hook for all your balls. <laughs> and then I'll also do a little couple of Usually, you're first. Do the surface. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So our third group talked about love and the things we think that love includes. Uh, love accepts things as they are with people. Love is caring and protection. Love is supportive. Love includes affection and communication. Love includes memories of people that you care about and love. Yeah. Wonders. In, in fact, I can say love. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, Jen, you're next. Okay. Uh, I had the gold candle, which was for um, service, and we talked about a lot of things. We talked about, like, you know, we talked about sort of the baby helps, the little helps, like, you know, returning an extra cart to the corral at the supermarket, to the obviously big actions of social justice and things like that, and everything in between that. Um, as, uh, as Irene said, kind of grease the wheels of the world and makes it a little bit easier for everyone. Um, and making it easier includes justice, it includes equity, because ask people who are not feeling those things, the world is hard. Um, and uh, we talked about um, it also including empathy, and compassion, and belonging. You get an extra kiss. Oh. <laughs> I win. Hi. Um, our word was peace, and of course, at this time of in our lives, peace has a lot of meaning to a lot of people. Um, but we came up with respecting and honoring others who have different experiences and backgrounds. I think this is a major problem that 
the whole world has. Um, the important part is listening. I think because if we don't listen, we don't hear other people's, uh, you know, feelings, and it's really important to respect those that um, may be different than ours. And that's about it. Do I give a kiss? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so ours was the blue panda. We talked about truth. So we um, being true to yourself, um, honesty, being true to other people, showing them your true self, um, feeling guilty when not being truthful, and uh, defending the truth against lies. So you know, it's kind of speaking up when others are telling lies. And then um, my favorite was taking the, sign, the time to see another person's truth. Well done, well done. <laughs> Tell me your first name again. Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi. <laughs> so our group worked on truth also, and some of the values and words that resonated with truth for us were vulnerability, honesty, integrity, universality, resonates, provides peace, and provides direction. Outstanding. Thanks, Linda. Our group, um, community and help, shared values, togetherness, structure, people that you can go to, the strength of the community will get you through. We can do what I can't. Lift each other up, help and help go together. Comfort in knowing if I am in trouble, I am not alone. Douglas, thanks so much. Done. Thanks, everybody. I I hope that that exercise. I understand that that's really quick, and we sort of thrust that you know into everybody's thinking. When we take a moment to reflect on what our covenant is, it's really how we choose to treat each other. So this sort of basic foundation is the work of really over a year's worth of effort from each individual small group when we met last year on the clipboards. If you had a chance to look at it, you saw that we pulled the six values that came out of all of our small groups, and I put that out there just to remind everybody we use those to help develop our new mission statement. And then today, I rewrote the covenant and highlighted those five attributes represented by the candles and represented by the work that we did and then everybody, you know, shared their new thoughts on that. We'll take all of that back, and if there are um, <clears throat> anything, any moments where people say, this is something, we'll give everybody an opportunity to say, hey, we think this needs to be adjusted, we think this needs to be changed, we think there's a piece here that's maybe a little out of date, we want to represent our current way of thinking, we'll create those opportunities. This was one of those opportunities, then there'll be additional so that we'll eventually wordsmith this during the course of the spring and we'll vote on, at, the, at our annual meeting, our new or our reaffirmed covenant. And that was really the objective for today as we, the transition team, take us through that so we know and reaffirm how we are going to treat each other. And maybe once a year we'll do a ritual around our covenant where we are lighting particular colored candles, breaking bread, smelling flowers, <coughs> Hugging, embracing, high-fiving, whatever it is. <laughs> that was a, that was our exercise today. Not really a sermon. I'm really sorry about that. And I'm going to um, give the floor back to Elizabeth and Linda. Thanks, everybody. So, if you would please stand as you were able and join us in singing together hymn number 34 in the gray hymn. Uh, though I may speak with the greatest fire.
Community Action Council to support their work here. Um, our offering will not be collected. Mm -hmm. special joy or concern. This is our quiet time. 
We do not speak because the voices are within us. It is our quiet time. We do not walk because the earth is within us. It is our quiet time. We do not dance because the music has lifted us to a place where spirit is. It is our quiet time. Let us open our hearts and still our minds and together enter time of prayer and quiet meditation. Let us join together in singing our song of inspiration found on page number 123 in the great hymnal, Spirit of Life. shining through the pain. Let it rise and let it glow. Let the light the world you know. Let it glow. Carry the flame. I invite you to clap along. Thank you. 